Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a bit of a different project than what I've done in the past. I have a laptop that I'm going to be using strictly for programming radios like these. I, I have a ton of these radios and they all use different programming software and figured I'd set up a laptop just for these programs, for uh, these radios. Um, and I'm gonna be upgrading this laptop. It's a cheap laptop. I think I paid like 20 bucks for it from a pawn shop. Um, I'm gonna be upgrading the hard drive, put an SSD in there, and it's got a proprietary charger. And that's what today's video is gonna be about. Today's video is gonna be about this little guy. This is a USB PD module, let's call it that, or chip. And pretty much what this does is if you plug in a type C, it'll tell the charger, Hey, I need this amount of voltage, like 20 volts, five volts, you know, 15. And it's got a bunch of different voltages here on the back. Now I will put a diagram on the screen so you guys can see what I'm talking about, but essentially you can solder these pins here and that'll change the voltage that it requests from the charger. Right now in its current configuration, I have it set to 20 volts, which is exactly what we need for this laptop. Um, I'm gonna be opening up the laptop. We're gonna take a look at the charger, see if I can even do this, and then solder this guy up in there. So let's begin. So uh, I've already upgraded the SSD in, in this machine. It does require a special connector. It's not SATA on this machine, weirdly, I think because it was just inexpensive, but this is a SATA, a M SATA to whatever the com connector was called on this. I, I can find it and put it on screen for you guys. There is tape here holding it down because there's really no way to mount this. But uh, Back to task. This is uh, this is the connector we want to check out here, and it's got a lot of pins. I wasn't expecting that many pins, but we will have to do some research. Uh, thankfully, I can pull it out. So let's remove the battery before we do anything. Let's pull that out. Come on. One of these in here. There we go. All right. Okay, so a bit of a cut here. I've been researching online because I figured that there's a lot of pins here. So uh, I've seen that the middle pin here is a resistor. And that resistor is what tells the laptop what charger you have, whether it's 65 watts or 90 watts or 100 so in order to get this to work properly, I have to connect this pin here to a resistor. So uh, I've watched a couple of videos. There's a really good video by Perka Vitrites. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I'll link the video in the description. And he pretty much shows the entire process. So I think I'm gonna go off what he did. And I have this resistor. And it, in order for a 65 watt to work, it has to be a 285 ohm resistor. This is 300, so I'm hoping this works, but hopefully it's close enough. I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna solder it up and see if it works and we can measure the voltage and the amps that it's trying to pull from the charger on the volt voltmeter over there and we will find out if this blows up in my face. Okay, so this is what I ended up with. We got the power ground and the resistor for the center pin there that goes to ground. These two pins I think were for data. This might be an updated connector because 
This wasn't on any of the diagrams, so I just left them cut. I will fully remove them once I'm sure this works, but that's that's why they're hanging there if you're wondering. Got the battery connected. Uh, we're gonna try it out. I just got this bag here to isolate it because nothing is covered up and then we can test for how much it's pulling from the charger. Okay, we do not have a light. I'm not sure what's going on, but I can test the probes off the laptop and then we can see what's going on. Okay guys, so after some troubleshooting and testing, I did get this thing to work. So it turns out that I had my pin configuration completely wrong. I had another Lenovo ThinkPad and I just started probing these pins for the charger here. This one's a little bit different, but it is the same connector. I don't know if you can see that, but I was just probing these pins just to make sure, you know, I was doing everything right and I was not. So it turns out these two outer pins are grounds. I should have seen that from the beginning. And then these middle inner ones are actually the power. And then that center one is the diode, which we knew before. My problem was I wasn't using these middle center pins here. And I will maybe take a picture of this and write out a diagram so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But after changing the charger configuration on my little DIY craziness here, it did start to work. What I did was I did bump up my resistors to about 580 ohms that was because i have a cable uh let me grab that for you guys i have a lenovo to type c cable and this cable is rated for 100 watts and i've been using this with 65 watt chargers and i haven't had any problems so i tested that pin there uh to test the the resistor that's in this and it's around 550 so I, I, you know, if I match that, I figured it would work fine and um, it's working fine. I have it on one of these little adapters so I can see what it's drawing. Uh, you might see, you might have noticed that the power is blinking. That's because the, the battery was super dead and there was no power in this at all. So as it goes up, you'll see that the amps that it's pulling will rise. That means that it's actually getting a charge and it's going through the charge sequence. So that will stop blinking as much. Um, it used to do that with this cable, so I'm not too you know, afraid of what's going on there, but I'm pretty sure it's because this laptop was completely dead. I haven't used it for months. Um, now, I'm gonna let it charge for a bit just to see if it works. I'm, I might even turn on the laptop just to see if everything's working okay. And then we will come back to this and I will finish up and button this up for you guys. Okay, so I got this cleaned up. I pretty much put capped on tape on the individual strands of wire just to keep them separate. And then I put it all over it just to seal it from touching anything. Same on the bottom. And from the video I mentioned earlier, I did find a 3D print that I will be using for this. Oh, here it is. Okay. It's just a little square and fits perfectly in there. And coincidentally, fits perfectly where the old, U uh, not USB, the old charger port was. I'm going to hot glue it in here so that it doesn't move. I'll just probably pour some in here. You can see that. And then maybe around the top so it doesn't move back so like around here and then we should be all good so uh the next clip you're gonna see is probably this all buttoned up and we'll see how it looks from the side okay i do apologize if there's noise in the background i got a 3d printer going right next to me 
um, but it's been a couple days. I've actually been using this. I'm got to install more programs, but um, I just wanted to show you guys it working and how it came out. Uh, you guys can see the port. All that damage was not me. Uh, the laptop came like that, but there's the USB port. It looks pretty clean uh, other than whatever happened there. But if I plug it in, you can hear that beep. That's my uh, little detector there. I'll show you guys. We're pulling an amp at 20 volts. And yeah, it's been working great. Um, I have to say this, this project has been pretty simple specifically for this laptop. If you have a barrel connector charger on your laptop, this is definitely a go. Like it, it, it would be super easy or should be super easy. Um, the ThinkPads kind of get annoying when you have to put the resistor in, which is not a big deal. But if you have a ThinkPad that is like not this one, but the other one that I showed, the, the, the motherboard that I showed at the beginning of this video, those are on the board and you have to desolder a connector from a board that might be a little troublesome if you're not familiar with like desoldering or having or if you have it like a hot air blower so definitely check first what kind of connector you have whether it's removable from the board or not um other than that this project's super easy anyone can do it just to end this video i'm going to put a graphic that i'll be making of the points I soldered on and where everything is, just so everyone's aware of what I did. If I didn't explain it good enough, which I probably didn't because I am horrible at explaining stuff, but I'll get there. You're gonna have your positive, negative, and then the four, the four pins on the board that determine what voltage you're gonna get. Thank you everyone who watched the video. Uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to. Have a good one and I'll see you guys next time.